Today's lesson is over linear programming, and today we're going to talk about just the basics of linear programming. Um, it can be kind of confusing for students at first, so today we're just going to get to know the process, um, what we need to do um, in order to solve the word problems, which we'll do tomorrow. So first, what is linear programming? Linear programming is a method of finding a minimum or maximum value a minimum or a maximum, right? Lowest or highest value of a function that satisfies a given set of conditions called constraints. Okay, so we're looking at some new vocabulary words today and I will walk you through what each of those means in a second. So why do we use linear programming? Um, linear programming, or researchers use it to find the most economical solutions within a set of limitations. So how would I maximize profit, you know, giving these certain limitations, right? Um, limitations set by either production or your budget, right? If you're trying to maximize profit for some things that you're selling, but um, you, you know, you only have a budget of like $2,000 and, or you only, you know, production time, it can only get you 20 um, units of whatever we're talking about here. Like, how can you maximize your profit? How can you minimize cost, right? So that's how you would use linear programming. So first let's talk about what a constraint is. A constraint, and it's just a new vocabulary word, so you'll hear me say it a lot, it is one of the inequalities in a linear programming model. Okay, so whatever is an inequality, um, that is a constraint. And these are often derived from restrictions placed on available resources. So, you know, just like I said, those limitations that I'm talking about, those are your constraints, right? So I only have this much money, okay? That's a constraint, right? If I have, I, I only have a budget of $2,000, then, you know, my, my money, right? My budget can, is gonna be less than or equal to $2,000, right? That would be a constraint. So now let's move on to your feasible region. So yesterday we graphed systems of linear inequalities and um, it, the overlapping shaded region in your system of linear inequalities, that's your feasible region. So it's your solution to the set of the constraints graphed. So if the constraints are a bunch of inequalities, if I graph those inequalities on a coordinate plane, right, the feasible region is that overlapping shaded region. It's the solution set. So any point in this region satisfies each of the constraints, right? So a solution, it will satisfy whatever we're talking about. And then we also have an objective function, which is the quantity to be maximized or minimized, all right? If I'm talking about profit, I want to maximize profit. I want to minimize cost. So the objective function is a linear function in the form z equals ax plus by. You'll also see a lot of people not write z equals because it's really not an equation. Um, it's just going to be an expression. But you might see if people are talking about profit, they'll write p equals or c equals. You might see um, something like that. So you can refer to all of these um, vocabulary words as we're going through our set of two examples in today's lesson. So let's move on to the next little bit. Um, the, the first part, or the next part, I'm sorry, I forgot to go over this uh, little arrow right here. If there's a minimum or maximum value of the objective function, it will occur at a vertex. So this is a, an important piece of information that we'll be looking at today. The steps that we're gonna take to solve today, the first thing we're gonna do is graph the constraints. Right? And if the constraints are the inequalities, we're just graphing a bunch of linear inequalities on a coordinate plane, which we did yesterday. That's nothing new. Okay, So we're going to graph the constraints. These are the linear inequalities to find the feasible region. So we've already done that. That's, this is nothing new. Um, the next thing we're going to do, though, is identify the vertices of the fe feasible region, and we're going to list all of these as ordered pairs. Then, and these are the new steps, all of these are new steps for today. We're gonna to substitute X and Y values for each ordered pair into the objective function. So we're gonna use that objective function to find all values of Z, all right? The lowest value of Z is the minimum, the highest value of Z is the maximum. And we'll, I'll walk you through just how to do that on these next two examples. So let's look at example number one. 
it says find the minimum and maximum or maximum and minimum values of the objective function z equals 3x plus y under the following constraints. So again, this is just basic linear programming. We're not looking at any word problems for today. So I've got all of these um, linear inequalities. These are called constraints. I've got one, two, three, four linear inequalities, and I'm going to graph all of those on this coordinate plane. And that's the first thing we're going to do. So let's first graph um, x is greater than or equal to zero. And I'm going to show you how I go about doing this. So this line right here whoop, is x equals zero. So I actually graph the line first. Okay, I don't do any shading until the very end, but it's greater than or equal to zero. So I'm going to be shading to the right when I get to that point. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is graph the line y equals zero. I have to keep pressing this. I wanted to change colors, but it's not going to let me. So I'm going to go ahead and graph the line y equals zero. Okay, and we'll be shading y is greater than or equal to zero. So these are often called non-negativity constraints where we're, we're restricting what we're talking about to quadrant one, right? Um, because I can't have a negative you know, something. I can't have negative products or, you know, negative, you know, a negative balance, a negative money. Okay. So those are your non-negative negativity constraints, which you'll often see on, um, in word problems. So now let's graph the next part. Oh, let me change my colors here. Okay. So I, I really wanted to change colors, but it's not going to let me. So let's now take this 2x minus y is less than or equal to 8. We're going to graph it, but how do I do that? Again, this is nothing new. I'm just going to solve for y. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides, and I get negative 2x plus 8, and then we're going to divide both sides by negative 1. So y is greater than or equal to positive 2x minus 8. And then I'm going to graph y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 8. Okay, so let me see. I actually don't have... Um, negative 8 here on this coordinate plane to graph, but that's okay because I can easily find my y, my x-intercept here by um, plugging in 0 for y, right? So if I wanted to find that x-intercept, just because, you know, I'm limited on my graph right here, so I could plug in 0 for y, and I'm just looking for, I'll just set it equal to, equals 2x, minus 8, I can add 8 equals 2x, and I have that x equals 4. So I know that my x-intercept is going to be at 4, which means I have a point right there. So I can go ahead and graph the rest of this line because the slope is positive 2, so rise 2, run 1, and we're going to have a solid line, okay? So, whoop, that's not a very good line, but there's my line, okay? All right, so there's my line, and we're looking at y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 8. Oh, now it's going to let me do this. All right, I'm going to erase some of these dots up here because they're kind of driving me nuts. Okay, so let's graph another one. All right, and the next one, awesome, y is less than or equal to negative 1 half x plus 7. So I don't need to convert it to slope-intercept form. It's already in slope-intercept form, form. So let's go ahead and graph it. So plus 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, there is my y-intercept, and then my slope is negative 1 over 2, so down 1 over 2, and there's my line that I'm going to graph, and y is everything less than or equal to this line, and you know what, I'm going to go ahead and write, like right here, y equals negative 1 half x plus 7, because that's the equation for that line, and I'll go ahead and write on this other one over here, this one was y equals 2x minus 8, okay? So now let's graph the feasible region. So where is the overlapping shaded region for all four of these linear inequalities? So I've got um, x is greater than 0, y is greater than 0, right? Restricted to quadrant 1. This one right here, y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 8, okay, we're going to be shading above on that one, y is less than or equal to negative 1 half x plus 7, so that 
shaded region that satisfies all of these linear inequalities is right in here, okay? So there is my feasible region. That's what that is called. This right here is called your feasible region. So what does that mean? That means every point in that shaded region right there satisfies all of these linear inequalities. But what we wanna do if we want to maximize or minimize something, you're gonna find the optimal solution, right? This is also called optimization, right? You're gonna find the optimal solution at one of the vertices. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to circle all of my vertices for this polygon, if you will, okay? And I've got four vertices. What I do is I have, I've seen some people like label them. I just start with this one right here and I just kind of go around that polygon um, in a clockwise motion. So I'm gonna list my ordered pair zero, zero. This one up here is zero, seven. This one right here. Now what you really should do, okay? And we're not gonna do this as much in Algebra 2. You might in honors um, or pre-calculus. What you would really do is you would take y equals negative 1 half x plus 7 and y equals 2x minus 8, and you would find that point of intersection, right? How do you find that point of intersection? You set up a system of equations and you solve for x and y. And then sometimes you're left with like non-integer solutions, which we're not gonna be talking about in this lesson for algebra two, okay? So um, right now I'm just gonna, I, I know that my scale was one, I counted by ones, it passes through that point. That point is six, four. And then last but not least, I have this point down here, which is um, four, zero, okay? So then what I'm gonna do now is I have this objective function up here. Z, watch, we just did that z equals 3x plus 4. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take each x and y value and I'm going to plug it into 3x plus 4 and I'm going to get a value for z. So let's do that here. So 3 times 0 plus 4 times 0 equals 0. If I plug in 0 for x and 7 for y, I get 3 times 0 plus 4 times 7, I'm going to get 28. If I plug in 6 for x, which would be 3 times 6, okay, and that's going to be 18, plus 4 times 4, and that's going to be 16, and then if I do 18 plus 16, I get uh, 34. And then if I plug in 4 for x, so I'm going to do 3 times 4, plus 4 times 0, I'm going to get 12. So now I have all these values for z. What are you, the very last thing you're asked to do in today's lesson is find that minimum and maximum value. Well, my minimum value is gonna be my lowest value for Z. My maximum value is my highest value for Z. So again, that last little part, which was that arrow earlier on, if there's a maximum or minimum value of the objective function, it will occur at a vertex of the feasible region. And here is where it occurs. Your minimum value occurs here, right? It's zero at zero, zero. Your maximum value occurs here, 34 at six, four. And we'll apply this to some word problems tomorrow. But what I've really found is students just need help with the basics, right? The process, here's your process, okay? Because when we, when we tack on those word problems, you know it becomes um, more difficult. And I'm actually going to label this. Let's see. It's 0 at the point 0, 0. And then right here, it is 34 at the point 6, 4. Okay, so those are my minimum and maximum values. So let's do one more example for today's um, lesson. It says find the maximum or minimum values of the objective function z equals 4x plus y under the following constraints. So I have one, two, three, four, five different linear inequalities that make up my constraints. And I've got a graph 
all of them on this coordinate plane. So the first thing I'm going to do is graph my non-negativity constraints. That's x is greater than or equal to 0, which here's x equals 0. So I know x is greater than or equal to 0. I'm going to shade to the right. Here's y equals 0. So y is greater than or equal to 0. I'm going to shade above that. And that's going to restrict me to the first quadrant. The next thing I'm going to graph is another um, horizontal line, and that's y is less than or equal to 8. So I'm going to go up to where y equals 8 on my y-axis. I'm going to draw a line, horizontal line through that, and that's the line y equals 8. So y less than or equal to 8, I'm going to shade below it, right? So now we're kind of looking at this um, area in here, right? So let's move on to the next one. X minus Y is less than or equal to 4. Let's solve for Y. I'm going to subtract X from both sides, and I get negative X plus 4, and then I divide everything by negative 1, and I get Y is greater than or equal to uh, positive X minus 4. So here's my next um, inequality that I'm going to graph. The first thing I'm going to do is graph, and let's like change colors here just because um, I like to. So I'm going to graph this one in pink. So I'm going to graph my y-intercept, and then my slope is positive x, right? So here is the line that makes up the boundary line to this linear inequality. And I would call, what I'm going to do is um, go ahead and write down here, this is y equals x minus 4, right? So there's the equation for that line, but we're going to obviously shade and now we're restricted to, because it's greater than or equal to x minus 4, we're already like in here somewhere, okay? But we have another inequality to graph, and we need to do that. So let's move on to the last and final uh, linear inequality, and that would be 4x plus y is greater than or equal to 6, right? We're on this very last one. So I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides and I get negative 4x plus 6, um, and that's all I have to do. I'm just going to go ahead and graph this um, boundary line for this linear inequality. So I'm going to go up to positive 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, obviously, to lower than the 8, and my slope is negative 4, so down to 3, 4 over 1, down to 3, 4 over 1, okay? And I'm just going to, um, two, three, four, over one. I'm going to go ahead and graph this linear inequality. All right. Whoops. Okay. So now I have y is greater than or equal to negative 4x plus 6. So now I'm going to go ahead and shade my feasible region, right? This would be the region that satisfies all of these linear inequalities, right? Because we kind of did a little bit at a time, right? We're restricted to the first quadrant. It's less than or equal, y is less than or equal to 8. I know it's y is greater than or equal to x minus 4. That's this line in pink. And then it's also greater than or equal to negative 4x plus 6. So we're looking at this area to be the overlapping shaded region. So now the next step is to find the vertices of this, um, this feasible region. So I have a vertex right here. I have a vertex right here. I have a vertex right here, right here, and right here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at this vertex right here, and I'm gonna list all of my vertices, right? Because if there's a minimum or maximum, which you're asked to find both, it's going to occur at a vertex. So this one right here is 0, 6. Let's move up to this next one. It's 0, 8. And then we've got um, this one over here, right there. Um, that's actually 12, 8. Okay, right 12 up 8. But again, like where would this intersection occur? It would occur at the intersection of, or the solution to the system of equations, y equals x minus four and y equals eight, right? So I could plug, you know, I could solve it using substitution, which is what I would do in this case, um, and figure out that um, 
that point of intersection. And then we have this one right here, one, two, three, four. Um, that one is four, zero. And then the last and final one is this one right here, okay? Which, what is that point? Um, that's the point, it's gonna be the point of intersection between y equals zero and y equals, which I didn't write it over here, y equals negative four x plus six, okay? So it's gonna be the point of intersection between y equals zero and y equals negative four x plus six. So I'm actually gonna solve this system of linear, any, linear equations and I'm gonna find that point of intersection. So if y equals zero, anywhere I see y, I can replace it with zero. I see y right here, so y equals negative four x plus six. And then I'm just going to solve this basic equation, divide both sides by um, negative four, and I get x equals positive three over two, which three over two is just um, 1.5. And I'm actually gonna write 1.5, and I know it's on the x-axis, so um, y is gonna be zero. And I've got my five vertices. So that was an example of where, in a situation, especially when you get into like way upper level math, like pre -cal calculus, you're gonna wanna find, you're gonna wanna verify it by setting up your system of equations. Okay, so let's move on to the last little bit. And in our last little bit, we're going to plug in um, zero for et, or each of these x values in for x, and each of the y values in for y in our objective function up here. Which is it letting me? All right, into our objective function up here. Okay, so 4x plus y. So I'm going to do this first one right here. 4 times 0 plus 6 equals 6. And now let's plug in 0, 8. I'm going to plug in 4 times 0 plus 8, and I get 8. In the next one, I'm going to plug in 12 for x and 8 for y. Um, let's see, and that's 48 plus 8, that's going to be 56. In the next one, I'm going to plug in 4 for x and 0 for y, and I'm going to get 16. And in the next one, I'm going to plug in 1.5 for x. You could plug in 3 over 2, whatever you want. Plus 0 equals, let's see, 4 times 1.5 is going to be 6. So now, I've got all of my values here. If a minimum or a maximum occurs at a vertex, then it's going to be one of these values, right? So what's my minimum? Well, actually, I have two minimums here. I have a 6 here and a 6 here. Okay, well, where are those points over here? 1.50 is right here, and 0, 06 is right up here. If you have two minimum values, then every single point on this line that connects these two vertices would satisfy that minimum value, okay? So this is one of those situations, and the same would go for a maximum. Every point on the line connecting those two vertices would satisfy that minimum requirement. So you have a minimum right here, and you have a minimum right here. Whoops, 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 whoops. Okay, so where's your maximum value? Where your maximum value is the highest value, right? So it's gonna be 56 right here. It's 56 at 12, eight. There is your maximum, which is right up here, right? That There's your maximum, it's 56 at the point 12, eight. Okay, so today is just like understanding the process and you can see why I break it down into two separate days because this is already like almost a 25 minute video. There's a lot of steps that go into linear programming, but it's highly, highly valuable. Um, you just need to practice the, um, the process because you know there's obviously more that's gonna be added when you're talking about word problems, which we'll do tomorrow, but that concludes your day one notes over linear programming, the basics. I hope it was helpful.